So the second technique um, that we're going to be talking about is uh, called river routing. This is actually a pretty commonly used technique in um, water resources. So this is the procedure to determine uh, the time and magnitude of flow um, at a point, which is typically like the outlet um, <clears throat> due to multiple point contributions upstream. So um, this is also known or also called flood route flood routing. Um, and it is essentially a kind of a, a branching of um, branch of your mass um, of your mass balance equation. Um, which is the change in storage with respect to time is equal to your inflows minus your outflows. Now, um, the way that this is, the way that this works is you essentially have a, what's called kind of like a, like, a, like a channel prism. So this channel prism is a, a very simple representation of uh, flow moving in a channel. So I'm going to draw kind of an example. So you have an end over here and an end over here. Okay. You have kind of the surface. Here's a surface connecting here. There's a subsurface of the channel. And Okay, so this is kind of like the business as usual, like you have this channel uh, essentially with some base flow in it. But what happens is that you have kind of a change in storage. So you have what's built on top of it is like an extra prism that looks like that. So can you see this is kind of like a wedge on top of the water surface? Okay, so this wedge is essentially um, our inflow minus our outflow. Um, it has some storage associated with it. So we have wedge storage. And um, we have some flow rate leaving the system. And what we're essentially trying to do is we're trying to guess the timing. So the timing it takes this prism to move from the upper extremities of the watershed to the exit. So the time it takes to travel from here to here. Does that make sense? Um, the, the, the method that we use to estimate this is called the Muskingum Kunge kinematic routing method. And again, it uses this kind of um, prism uh, estimation to get our total storage. So the total storage is equal to the volume of our prism storage. Oops, forgot an A. Plus the volume of the wedge storage, and that's the total amount essentially leaving our system. I'm not gonna go over the derivation of the equations because it's, it's, it's not necessary. You'll be happy with that. Um, but I'm gonna give you the governing equations to use this approach. So <clears throat> you have to use 
uh, a combination of the inflow. You have to know the inflow information. So somewhere upstream, you have an estimation of, or you have like a dam releasing uh, water to the downstream system. So you can essentially kind of estimate based off of that inflow, what your outflow would be. So you'd get something like this. So Q, Q J plus one is C one I J plus one plus C two I J plus C three Q J. So I'll explain what these are. So J is the time step. J plus one is the next time step. I, J, and I, J plus one must be known inflow values, again, from upstream dam release or actually doesn't necessarily have to be a dam. It could also be from a uh, forage. Like you can do this analysis for a subbasin. Um, okay, and the C's are uh, these kind of empirical, empirical equations that help, or that are a function of the prism. So C1, is delta t minus 2kx over 2k1 minus x plus delta t. C1, C2 is delta t plus 2kx divided by 2k1 minus x plus delta t. And C3 is 2k1 minus x minus delta t over 2k1 minus x plus delta t. So I'll explain what each of these are. So delta t is your um, change in time. So your, dur your duration. Could you go back one line up? Sure. Right here? Yeah, yeah. I'm still writing the ij, Did, comma, ij plus one. Oh, so you're still writing that. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Um, okay, so your delta t is just your duration and time. Um, your k is your time of travel of the flood wave through the channel reach. Okay, I'm done writing. Sure. I'm just kind of filling the space here. And then X is the weighting factor. And depends on the shape of wedge storage. Okay. Um, X ranges from zero to 0 0.5, um, typically a value of zero. So that means there's no wedge, there's no backwater. This is um, typical oops, typical for a level pool. So again, just no, uh, no, uh, yeah, no backwater coming into the system. It's just a flat channel. Um, X equal to 0.5 is a full wedge. And this is really common um, for fast moving systems. So like urban systems that are contributing to the flow. Um, and an X of zero to 0 0.3 is typical for like a natural stream. Okay, um, did I get everything? We have K, we have X, and we have DT. Okay, now the last thing that's really important about these uh, C1, C2, and C3 is that the summation of 
C1, oh, I guess I'll need that. Uh, C1 plus C2 plus C3 must equal to zero, I'm sorry, equal to one. Um, if you look at the denominator of each of these parameters, you can see that they're the same. So if they don't add up to one, you just did something wrong in your calculation and it's just a quick check to make sure that you um, have your calculations correct. I just wanna do an example really quickly. So what the first thing you have to do is you have to calculate your C1, C2, and C3. So your C1 is going to be, and again, these, these parameters are given to you here. So root the inflow hydrograph below using the Muskie method. So your delta T is one hour, X is 0.2, and K is 0.7 hours. So you just calculate your C1 as delta T minus 2KX divided by 2K1 minus X plus delta T. Can someone really quickly calculate these for me? And what would be helpful is if you calculate the denominator and tell me the number and I'll write it on the, I'll write it on the screen. Because okay. the denominator for all of these is going to be the same. Yeah. 2k1 minus x minus delta t. All right. The denominator is uh, 2.12. 12. Yeah. Is... Uh, Sorry, you said it one more time, 212? 2.1, 212, yeah. All right, so then give me the C's. So what's the denominator for C, or yeah, for C1? 0 0.72. Numerator, sorry. For the, is that 0. the numerator? 72. Numerator, yeah, numerator. 0. Yeah. 0.72, okay. You want so then the, you're... you want C1 or completely or? Sure. What's C1? Uh, it's uh, 339. 0 0.339. Sorry. Perfect. I would actually suggest giving a few extra numbers because it'll, it'll come in handy when doing the summation. Oh, okay. Um, okay. What's C2? Find 603. 603, I'll give you a few extra numbers seven, there. Seven. Perfect. And then C3? It's like 0 0.06. I, I, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just looking at the number and just like... <laughs> yes, it's a small number. You're right. It's, that's, that's perfect. Okay. Now, if you sum all of these up, you should get pretty close to one. Right? 0 0.33962 plus point. 60377 plus 0 0.0566 is 0 0.99999. So pretty close to one. Okay. Oosh. All right. So now what we're going to do is um, the first thing you want to do is uh, transpose these inflows. So do you see these, these uh, headers here? That this is IJ plus one and this is IJ? Mm -hmm. Okay. So IJ is your inflow at our 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in numerical order, right? So mm -hmm. all you're going to do is you're going to transpose the inflows here into IJ. So it's going to be 0, 800, 2,000, 4,200, 5,200, 44, 40, 4,400, sorry. 3,200, 2,500, 1,700, 400, and zero. Now, in this column, what you're going to do is you're going to shift your IJ. So you're going to have uh, a shift here um, to be IJ plus one. So it's not going to be IJ at hour zero. It's going to be IJ at hour one, which is going to be what number? 2,000? No. Yeah. It's going to be... 800? Eight, 800. Oh, 800, my bad. Yeah. So you just kind of... Oops. I don't know why this is doing that. To me. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, OK. 
Okay, so this will be 2000 and this will be 4200. Sorry, these got all screwy. Okay, and then this will be 5200, 4400. You're just shifting. That's it. Okay. All right. Now, you're not given any information about the inflow. Um, so what you're essentially getting is that you're not routing from a dam upstream. You're routing from uh, a, a blank storm, like a blank watershed. Like you're just trying to figure out what the flow rate is going to be given that they're contributing inflow into the system. So well, your, your queue at hour zero is actually going to start off at zero. You're not going to have any flow. Now, all you have to do is go back to this equation I gave you up here. Oops, I'm sorry. It's on the other, uh, it's on our notes. So you go back to the equation I gave you in the notes, and here's a little, sh little shortcut that I use. So put C1, C2, C3 at the top here. Actually, you can just write them in, I guess. This would be uh, point three three nine. And this is point six zero four, and then point zero five seven. Okay, what you're gonna do is you're going to multiply i j plus one multiplied by your c one, which is point three three nine. Then you're going to add your i j multiplied by point six zero four, and then you're going to add your QJ multiplied by 0 0.057. So again, if you go back to the equation I gave you, your QJ plus one is C1 IJ plus one plus C2 IJ plus C3 QJ. Do you see that? Yeah. So then if you do that, your calculation, so what is QJ plus one going to be? Again, it's going to be 800 multiplied by 0.339 plus 0 plus 0. Mm. So what's the value? 271. Uh, yeah. 0.2. Perfect. Okay. Now, this is your QJ plus 1, which means that this is going to, it, it's going to be your, that's your, your flow rate for the next hour. So that number actually goes down here. Down there. Mm. Okay. So it's two seventy one point two. And then you do the you do the process again. It's gonna be two thousand multiplied by point three three nine plus eight multiplied by point six zero four plus two seventy one point two multiplied by point zero five seven. And that's gonna give us what? 1,176.6. Beautiful. Okay. And then you just keep doing it again. Does this make sense? This is about 2,700, 2, 4, 4, 5, 4.7, 4, 8, 8, 6, 1, 2. Oops. 